Shabbat Shalom, everyone. My name is Ebed Saris Davi, and I'm talking to you today from Shema O Israel. Today is a very, very special day, type of day that uh, we definitely got to rejoice and be glad in the Most High because He's truly made it. First and foremost, we're going to have the blowing of the shofar. Hallelujah. Our first scripture, the reason why we get together, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. That's just to give you some insight as to why we gather, what it is we gathering for, and things of that nature. Our next reading is Proverbs 28, verse 9. It is written, He that turns away his ear from the hearing of the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Hallelujah. So it's plain and it's simple. Now we're going to have the hearing of the Lord from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yah, thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yah, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yah, thy Elohim, in vain, for Yah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yah thy Elohim. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yah blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah, thy Elohim, gives thee. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not covet thy neighbor's house. You shall not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Next, we're going to have our opening prayer. Today's prayer was in Psalm 56. I'm a near facing east. 
Yeah. Father Yah, we glorify you and lift you up, Father, for life, health, and strength. Praise and thank you for how you kept us, keep us, Father, during the course of this week. Praise and thank you for your allowing your loving kindnesses and tender mercies to be renewed in the midst of our lives. Praise and thank you, Father, for allowing your hand, Father, to be mercifully upon us, Father, and for you, Father, allowing your face to shine upon us. Praise and thank you, Father, how you kept our family circle so that none of the family circle is broken. Praise and thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing, Father, we your children to be in the land of the living. Praise and thank you, Father, for all the wisdom you gave us, all the protection, all the anointing you gave us that allowed yokes to be destroyed. Praise and thank you, Father, for all that is going on in our lives. And as we look to you for forgiveness of sins, we praise and thank you for your word in Psalm 56 that says, Be merciful unto us, O Elohim, for man will swallow us up. He fighting daily oppresses us. Our eyes with daily daily swallow us up, for they be many that fight against us. O thou, most high, what time we are afraid, we will trust in thee. In Elohim, we will praise his word. In Elohim, we have put our trust. We will not fear what flesh can do unto us. Every day they rest our words or their thoughts are against us for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark our steps when they wait for our soul. Shall they escape by iniquity and thy anger? Cast down the people, O Elohim. You tell our wanderings, put thy tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When we cry unto thee, then shall our enemies turn back. This we know for Elohim is for us. In Elohim will we praise his word, and Yah will we praise his word. In Elohim have we put our trust, we will not be afraid what can man do unto us. Thy vows are upon us, O Yah, we will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered our souls from death, will not thou deliver our feet from falling, that we may walk before you in the light of the living. We ask, Father, that you would quicken your Ruach, your Holy Spirit, upon us. We ask, Father, that you would stir up these words in our lives and allow them to come off the page and be a life alive in our lives. We ask, Father, that you would just continue to keep us according to your election and purpose, Father. We ask, Father, that you would show us, Father, where we, your children, should take a deep look at ourselves, Father. Show us ourselves, Father, so we can lay those things out, Father. Lay those things down, Father, that are too heavy for us and that will hinder you from hearing our prayer. We ask, Father, that you would continue to keep us, continue to bless us, and continue to guide us. We ask these and all of our blessings in your son's name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Had to help Mrs. Darvi up off the floor. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get into our, uh, our exhortation. Past few weeks, we started with Ephesians chapter 6, dealing with the armor of the Most High. And we've been dealing with the uh, verse 7, uh, excuse me, uh, verses uh, 18 and 19 in Ephesians chapter 6 that speaks intuitively about what is going on with our, uh, one piece of our armor, and that's the prayer. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And we also got to pray for our saint, the saints, okay? A lot of times we lack in our, our prayer lives and because we have a lack in our prayer lives, we don't get the things or we don't be in the position or we don't have the strength or the anointing. It's always something because we lack in our prayer lives. We got things that are hindering us in our prayer lives. We've been dealing with and discussing why some prayers aren't heard. Okay. As we see here in Isaiah 59, uh, uh, last two sessions we've been on. Verses 1 and 2 reigns prevalent. The Most High's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. 
But your iniquities, we all got iniquities, have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Okay? Some of you all are wondering, all right? Uh, we opened up. You wonder why Why did he uh, uh, read Proverbs 28 and 9 before he uh, 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 prayed? I want you to understand that if you turn your ear to the hearing of the law, your prayer is an abomination. That's another thing that hinders a lot of your prayers. Okay, stay diligent in, 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 in hearing the law and applying the law to your life. All right. Some may dispute about the 10 up front, really the 613 up front and the two in the back. Okay, the two in the back Messiah gave us stem from those 613 up front. So we as a people got to really, really take it in our hearts and our minds, our spirits, our souls and, and, and try to figure out what it is we going to say, what it is we going to do in our walk. OK, we read in uh, Psalm 55. Verse uh, 17, the, how many times a day uh, 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 David prayed? Uh, uh, Daniel went over it in uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Each of them prayed three times a day. And remember, prayer don't always mean, you know, a, a, a supplication or something like that. Sometimes a prayer is uh, just a hymn or a light and an incense. So some of you all going through in the workplace. We dealt with Nehemiah. Chapters 4, 5, 6, Nehemiah, all right? And he was in the workplace, and people tried to make him afraid. The man said five prayers in three chapters, all right? And the chapter ended in chapter 6 saying, even still Sabala tried to make him afraid, all right? <laughs> so sometimes it's more than one prayer. We also dealt with the preparation for those who are trying to become warriors and soldiers in this thing of ours. The preparation is right there in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. It's very important that you prepare in this walk, all right? reason why I say it's important that you prepare in uh, Luke 4 is actually critical and key because you'll see something in verse 1 and in verse 14. Luke 4, verse 1 says, Messiah being full of the Spirit, the Ruach was led by the Ruach into the wilderness. Verse 14 said, he returned in the power of the Ruach, okay? But he went through all he went through in verses 2 to 12, okay? He went through three sins that are, are common to men. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, all right? That's what happened in the garden in the beginning, all right? Now, that, that's enough of the review. Let's get into today's chapter again, which is Isaiah 59. I'm going to read the whole thing before we even start to pick out and pick on anything. It is written. Behold, Yah's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have muttered perverseness. None calls for justice, none nor any pleads for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies, they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice's eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eats of their eggs dies, and that which is crushed breaks out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of shalom they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goes therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither do justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. <coughs> we grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the, in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears 
and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against Yah, and departing away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Judgment is turned away backwards. Justice stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth fails, and he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. And Yah saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment, and he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Furry to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay, recompense. So shall they fear the name of Yah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Ruach of Yah shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Yaakov, says Yah. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yah. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says Yah from henceforth and forever. Hallelujah. Take a look at this, peoples. All right. We dealt with one through eight earlier. Absent of verses one and two, we already know why the prayers are not being answered. All right. From verses 3 to 8, we saw 22 things that we, again, got to go into our heart of hearts, got to go into deep prayer about them secret faults and them, them, them secret sins, them presumptuous sins, all of that stuff. We got things that we do that we don't know we do, and we got things that we do that don't nobody know we do. So see how the secret is twofold? My earthly father over there laughing. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. It's very important for us to take a look at ourselves. You're wondering why your prayer is not heard. All right? Run through in uh, 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 1 through 8 in, in Isaiah 59. Use a piece of paper. Take a look at verses 3 to 8. And start looking at these things and writing them down. And you take a look at yourself in that Holy Spiritual mirror and see if you've done any of these things, all right? Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of shalom they know not, and there's no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goes therein shall not know shalom. So some of you all may be wondering what it is that are going on in your prayer life that your prayers ain't answered. But see, those those things, because we did them things up there in one through eight, but we still got more uh, uh, of a, an effect from what we were doing because uh, in verses nine to 15, we got some more of the, I don't know, the backlash or, or more of the, the reaping from the, the evil fruit we sowed in verses one through eight. Let's read verse, verse 9. It says, therefore is judgment far from us. Some of you all are going through adverse situations. Some of you all are going through situations in a workplace, in a place of worship, and even in your home and in your community. And you wonder why all everybody's saying all this wrong going on and ain't nobody stepping up to help you. Well, you got to take a look at verses 1 through 8. Maybe you got still some hidden leaven, all right? 
some things going on. It says in 9, here's our first thing. Therefore is judgment far from us. All right? The second thing, neither do justice overtake us too. So now you got these in, uh, 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 compounded situations. Bad enough the most high don't want to hear your prayer because of what's going on in verses 1 and 2 in Isaiah 59. Then you got these 22 things in verses 3 to 8. And now here you go. You starting up with a whole nother list of compounded situations all because of sin. Remember now, Shlomo uh, faced these, threw up his hands, and began to pray to the Most High, and even prayed for the neighbor before he got to praying for Israel as a whole. All right, let's go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Don't go there now, but remember that, okay? 2 Chronicles chapter 6, most of you all know 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my... There's something, there's some, something going on before you get to that part. That's the answer. All right, that's the Most High's answer. All right, Shlomo laid out some things. All right, but at the end of the law here in Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17, verses 16 and 17, explicitly talks about the neighbor. Why? Look at Shlomo in uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 6, praying for the neighbor. If anybody does anything against their neighbor, this is key and critical in our walk. As warriors, as believers, as soldiers in his word, we as a people got to really, really, really look at ourselves because when we stand out there on a the battlefield, we don't need nothing holding us back like the sons of Sceva ended up getting in their situation or because of uh, uh, some stuff that they thought. Uh, they want to play with some things. They want to say some things they wasn't even trained and prepared for. All right? Remember now, this chapter here in Isaiah 59 is in our uh, is is after our prep chap chapter in Isaiah 58. Remember that long laundry list of things that went on with fasting, covering your mouth that pleases the Most High that we dealt with from uh what was that Luke chapter four one through fourteen. All right, remember Messiah was full of the ruach and led by the ruach went into the wilderness. 14, he returned in the power of the Ruach. So you get into Isaiah 58 and start training and start getting into what pleases the Most High, not what pleases man. Because as you see here, we will on a laundry list of things here in verse 9. The second thing was, neither do justice overtake us. All right? The third thing is we wait for light, but behold obscurity. Some of you all been waiting for that, that, that daylight to happen in your life, in your finances, in this way, in that way, your health, uh, uh, your minds, and all of this. But you as a people got to take a look at yourself for real. What are you going to do with that healing? Are you going to still propagate the same garbage or still do the same thing you was doing that before you got struck? A lot of you all prayer lives are being afflicted because you won't humble yourselves and pray and seek the Most High's face. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I can't seek his face for you. I can intercede on your behalf like Abraham did the first example of intercession and Torah for all those, uh, 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 those of Israel who are so wise and so smart. You know, uh, prayer is not like that in Israel and all this. The Most High told uh, Abraham to pray for that dude that uh, he told uh, uh, the king. That he told that this is my sister. All right? That was the first example of intercession. So we as a people really, really, really got to ask ourselves, what are we saying? What are we doing? How are we moving? How are we living? Okay? There's a lot of things that we think is right in our minds that ain't right. All right? Concerning these scriptures. We going on. It says in verse 9, the th uh, third thing, we wait for light, but behold, obscurity. The fourth thing, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. All right? Some of you all don't understand that the Bible, when, when, when we look at the word and it says the darkness couldn't comprehend the light. Yeah, this is some of that. All right? So we as a people got to, again, take a look at ourselves. As we go on to read verse 10, we grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. I'm so glad the Most High has given me eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to speak, uh, uh, faith, hand, hands in love, and, and feet to do. All right? 
Some of you all probably um, prayers are being hindered because you don't have no forgiveness. Uh oh. It's a laundry list of, of things as to why prayers aren't being heard. It's very important for we as his people to take a look at ourselves. Time is getting too short. A lot of things is happening uh, 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 on the uh, uh, global arena, you know, dealing with everything, signs of the times, conditions, circumstances, and situations. It's very important for us to understand this. Verse 11 in Isaiah 50. No, let's go back to verse, verse 10 in Isaiah 59. It begins to <laughs> talk about we grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. See, you're blinded. You might have physical sight, but that spiritual sight is gone. All right? Sight coming two planes now. Remember Messiah healing the guy spitting on the ground? And the guy said something like, uh, I see men like trees. And then he said he spit on the ground, did it again. And then he said he saw trees like men. That's sight in two forms. All right, you got natural and you got physical. I mean, spiritual. So we as a people got to keep that spiritual eye open so that we're able to move when the Most High wants us to move. A lot of times you with, you with your armor, you fiddling with the scripture, or you don't have uh, uh, the stamina or the strength inwardly, spiritually, to, to speak truth in the midst of a, a, a twisted situation. Get to using that armor. Start practicing. All right? And make sure your prayer life is is key and vital because the only thing I ever seen in scripture that the most high house was called was a house of prayer for all people. All right. Verse uh, 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 10 in Isaiah 59. All right. We're going with number five was we grope for the wall like the blind and we grope as if we had no eyes. Six was we stumble at noonday as in the night. Seven is we are in desolate places as dead men. All because we did them 23, one of them 22 things or all of them 22 things in verses one through eight. It goes on to say in verse 11, all right? It says, uh, uh, um, we roar all like bears. All right, this eighth thing is, is very important. Now you got people running around. Uh, Revelation talk about them being outside the um the gate. New Jerusalem barking like a dog, barking like a dog. Well, you got ravenous people around you now before we can even get that far. It's very important for us to be able to stand according to his election and purpose. And the only way you can really, really stand is with clean hands and a pure heart. You can't keep carrying the same old, pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down. The same. You can't keep carrying the same old stuff. It keeps on here in uh, Isaiah 59, 11. We roar all like bears. Nine. The ninth thing in verse 11, mourn sore like doves. The tenth thing, we look for judgment, but there's none. The eleventh thing, for salvation, but it is far off from us. We looking for Messiah. We looking for Messiah. But Messiah is so far off from us because of this stuff. Some of you are asking, well, that word ain't don't say Messiah. That word say salvation. Well, last time I checked the Strong's Concordance, salvation in this instance was Yeshua. Alright? Now who was Messiah's name? For all you dealing with Torah and Tanakh, the only Old Testament only and, and deny Messiah? Take your anti-Messiah self somewhere. Because now you got caught up in a situation now that you got to humble yourself and pray and seek the most high face. Because many of you are saying things based upon you things you heard other people say instead of investigating for yourself. All right? It's nothing wrong with using a lexicon to be able to understand the, 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 the word in whatever language it was written in. Okay? In this case, you know, uh, 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 salvation is far off from us. Messiah is far off from us because of the sin. All right? Some of you all can't get to the next level because you don't want to say, Father, forgive me. Father, I repent. Father, I seek you. 
And I ain't telling you, talking to you as if I'm perfect. I'm here in my earthly parents' house, all right? <laughs> one of them liable to throw a shoe at me right now so, while I'm talking to you, all right? One of them liable, <laughs> liable to start telling stories right now while we going live, all right? <laughs> I'm not perfect. Nothing perfect about me whatsoever. But I got a heart of Darth v. Mm -hmm. I know when I messed up. Hey, Father, you know I did this, this, and this, you know, and they keep rallying about this, this, and this. I'm adding to their list, Father, and they still don't want to leave me alone, all right? Some of you all are quiet in the land. I'm quiet in the land, all right? My thing is this. You got to get to um, show enough truth with yourself. You got to come to grips with reality, all right? HD, high definition. You want to need it, all right, to deal with some things in life, all right? Some things going on right now is you got to really ask yourself, is it worth it following men? Follow the scriptures, all right? This example right here in this 11th thing about salvation, very, very, very important because I'm going to tell you something. You, you What you going to do? You going to go start uh, killing cows again? The humane, the humane society going to get y'all. Remember what happened to Mike Vick and them dogs? Yeah, they're going to get you. You're talking about you making a blood atonement. they even going to hit you upside the head. That is why Messiah died on the cross. They're going to get you. All right? <laughs> Keep playing, yeah? Keep playing. All right? Let's go on in verse uh, uh, 11. The 11th thing for salvation it is far off from us. The 12th thing here in verse 12, for our transgressions are multiplied before the Most High. All right? A lot of times people are compounding. Then compounded like you put them Legos together to build that Lamborghini. Yeah, that was a that yo for real. Whoever did that, they they had some time on their hands and they figured it out. But they built the Lamborghini out of Legos, all right. And it's the same way that them Legos connected all the all this wickedness, all this evil, all this stuff. Even talking about people uh, uh, to a degree. Uh, where it's not even like you giving a prayer request. That's 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 still like backbiting and all of that. So you know you gotta watch your gossip. Watch what you saying. Watch what you doing because this stuff here is multiplying. It's festering. It's compounding, and it's getting ready to start mutating into something that is you gonna end up with a reprobate mind. All right, take time out and repent, please, please. For our transgressions, verse 12, our 12th thing. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our 13th thing, our sins testify against us. All right? You don't have to uh, 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 sit here and fake the funk and try to uh, 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 talk my ear off about it. You know, you got to be real with yourself. All right? You got to be real with yourself. It goes on to let us know. For our Sins, our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them, all right? We as a people, we got 12, 13, 14, we got 15. Our 15th thing is here. Three, three of them things, man, it's crazy. Verse 12, first part, the 12th thing. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. The 13th thing, our sins testify against us. The 14th thing, our transgressions are with us. The 15th thing, us, um, 15th thing, and as for our iniquities, we know them. We need to know what it is we're doing. Some of you all are just messing up. Every time you open your mouth, quiet your spirit. That, that, that biblical Hebrew word for fast in Isaiah 58 is cover the mouth. Sometimes we got to quiet our spirit in order so that we can uh, uh, be able to be used, be able to be uh, to hear. First and foremost, two can't talk at the same time. Ain't nothing being heard. All right. <coughs> it goes on to say in verse 13, our 16th thing, in transgression, gressing and lying against the most high. Now we transgressing and lying against the Most High. Some of you all with your, your doctrine, your unfounded, cloudy, one verse here, one verse there doctrines. Some of you going in the back of the book, taking one verse and making a, a whole movement. Nah, man, you lying on the Most High. And then you lying on the devil. 
A lot of you all run around lying on the devil, saying the devil did this, the devil did, you did that. All right? Take responsibility for that. Paul told you what was up. In my flesh dwells no good thing. In my flesh dwells, say it with me. Let, take ownership of that. <laughs> all right? <laughs> well, on my job, they want everybody to take ownership, all right? This is, this is what we do here. We got to take ownership of this salvation. Yahshua, right there. Yeshua, right there. Salvation. But because of all this going on, he far from us. All right? It goes on to tell us, in transgressing and lying against the Most High, it's the 17th thing in verse 13, departing away from our Elohim, the 18th thing, speaking oppression and revolt, 19, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And you wonder why your children curse, your wife cursed, and all this. I'm talking to the, the Ishi, the, the head of the home now. I'm talking to him. You wonder why there's things going on in your home with your family and all that. You the head, all right? The wife, the body, you know? So what the head eat nourishes the body, okay? So if the head ain't eating right, how the body going to get nourished? Some of you all going to uh, 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 have your wives assassinated behind your foolishness, your hard-headed, your stubborn ways. Some of you all going to have so much retribution rain down on your children. All right? All because you want to do what they say here. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. You want to keep making up doctrine? I don't care. That's on you. My job is to get your blood off my hands. And I'm doing just that right now. Close your mouth and repent. All right? <laughs> I'm saying that and I'm smiling. But we all going to have to come to grips with this. Because it's only one thing you're going to want to hear. All right? And that one thing is this. Well done, my good and faithful eBay. Not Paquad, not Zakane, not Moray, eBay. All right? So you all need to understand what's going on here. Y'all can make up all the titles you want. You can make up all the stuff you want about all these positions. What it say here at the end of uh, verse 13, the 19th thing? Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Now let's go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. All right? That's what we need to be right now. I'm trying to tell you so. <laughs> let's go to uh, verse 14, the 20th thing. All oh, because we did them 22 things in verses 1 through 8. It says judgment is turned away backwards. So now, because you was pleading for judgment, judgment, Father, Father, be merciful, da 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 But because you want to continue to lie and all this, now here the judgment is turned backwards. Justice, the, 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 the 21st thing, justice stands afar off. So you, you don't have no judgment. You don't have no justice. Here go the 22nd thing. Truth is falling in the street. Here go the 23rd thing. Equity can't enter into the land. All because of them 22 things. I mean, and then verses 3 to 8. It's very, very important for us to be able to take that look at ourselves now. All right? Why the bridegroom tarries. Some people don't believe the bridegroom is tarrying. Some people don't even believe the bridegroom. Some people don't even believe the father. Yet alone the bridegroom, we the people that wake up, call our minds in, call our minds in. We got to think about these things here. Because I, I heard some foolishness the other day. I'm 50 years old. And for all 50 years of my life, us and we have been plural. Okay? Us and we have been plural. Not singular. All right? So wherever that garbage is coming from, let's go back to 13 at the end, that 19th thing, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. It's very important for us to understand what it is we say and doing. And if you don't know, there's nothing wrong with closing your mouth. What the Proverbs say about the fool? You know, people won't know he's a fool until he opens his mouth, something on that line, you know? 
It's very important that we, we take take time out and think about what we're saying because these are some serious degrees here. And here's our 24th thing right here in verse 15. Yea, truth fails, and he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. Look, we can't keep going on like this. We got, we got situations uh, mutating, compounding, situations just Boosh, 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 boosh. We got to ask ourselves, what's going on here? We got to ask ourselves to take an actual, a high definition, reality look at ourselves. Okay? Are there any questions, comments, any uh, praise reports, or uh, uh, any songs of worship to the Most High? Now, I already sung up here, so y'all waiting for me to sing again. It ain't happening. All right? Next time I sing, I'm going to charge y'all $19.99. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, we getting ready. Hey, you all be blessed. I hope this helps give clarity and understanding to what it is we have to do in our prayer lives. And I ain't talking about for no, no, no babes and all. You so-called meat eaters, you got to clean that up. Verses 3 to 8 in Isaiah 59, you meat eaters, clean that up. <laughs> because it's bad enough, it's 22 things up there. But then it's compounded, 20, mutated into 24 other things. All right? You all be blessed. We get ready to take a knee now and pray. Heavenly Father, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we ask, Father, that you would seal this word in us. Allow the conviction of the Ruah be upon each and every one, Father, that would uh, uh, hear this message, Father, and allow fruit to be brought forward unto thy glory. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bless those, Father, who would look at this video, Father. Bless them, Father, and allow them to share it, Father, so that we can be without spot and wrinkle, Father, hastening your return. We ask, Father, that you would move according to your election and purpose. Bless us all together and bless us all one by one. Continue to guide and keep us, Father, as we look to you. And continue, Father, to show yourself merciful unto us. Keep your hedge of protection round about those whom you've chosen. And for all those who need to come in, continue to turn their hearts, mind, spirit, and soul, Father, to want to serve you by any means. Your word in Yehuda, Jew, said, some saved by fire and hating the very garment being spotted. But nonetheless, uh, 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 now unto him that is able to keep us all from falling. Yeah. We praise and thank you, Father, for your word. So we ask that you would continue to keep us. We ask these and all other blessings in your son's name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You all be blessed. You all be safe. And until we meet again on the fourth day for exhortation, allow this word to rest, rule, and abide in you richly to bring forth fruit. Shabbat shalom. Amen.